What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to another video. So today we're talking about sports photography critiques. And specifically, I'm going to critique pretty much everybody's photos. <laughs> I get messages all the time through Instagram, through Twitter, through my email, through my website, people saying, here's some of my sports photos, what would your critiques be, what would your tips be, what could I do to improve? And probably all the time, like 95% of the time, I'm saying the same few things, the same three or four things. I say them over and over and over. So the idea with this video is that you can take the things that we're going to cover in this video, look at your own photos, and if any of those things apply, hopefully that will give you a chance to improve your own sports photos. Before we get into it, I'm going to ask you guys to do all the usual YouTube stuff for me. Hit the like button because it helps me out loads and loads on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Loads of other videos to come that I think you might enjoy. So let's get into this. So what I've done to try to help us is I have taken uh, the set of photos that I shot very recently at the Surrey Scorchers basketball game. And we're going to look at a few of those photos. We're going to look at some of the photos that I used, some of the photos that I didn't use. And we're going to talk about maybe why I didn't use some and I did use others, because that really is going to help us to look at what's important. Now, I know I've covered all these kinds of topics in videos before, and you guys who've heard it before and, and listened before, well done, but I really do think these are such key important points that it's worth making another video just to cover them. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, which is a tip that I have to give all the time, is make sure that you get the ball in the shot. That's so important with pretty much every ball-based sport. The photo will look better if you have the ball in the shot. That doesn't mean that you can never ever have a photo without the ball in the shot, but what you don't want is to needlessly have the ball outside of the frame if you can avoid it. Here's a good example of a photo that I didn't use. The reason I didn't use this photo from the game is because I'd caught the moment just a little bit too late and the ball had gone out the top of the frame. Therefore, to me, it's a nice image, but it's no good because the ball's not in the frame. So I rejected this one. It did not end up in the set. By comparison, luckily, I got a frame a couple of seconds before that, which did have the ball. You can see that one right here. And this is the photo that I did include into the set because for me, it's got the ball in it. If we look back at the other one, no question, it's a better photo and the only real difference is that the ball is in the better one and that's the photo we used. So that's a big thing. Try to get the ball in the photo. To emphasize the point, here's another photo. Decent photo, colors are nice, good composition. Not necessarily a bad photo, but by comparison, let's look at a similar shot like this one. See, it's better. The ball's in the shot. It is a better photo. Really important point. I cannot stress it enough. Get the ball in the shot. The next thing I'm going to talk about is cropping. It's so important to crop your photos in closer when it comes to sports. Now, a lot of the time when you're shooting sports photography, you might be on big, long lenses. You might be getting in nice and close to the action, but that doesn't necessarily mean that your photos don't need to be cropped a little bit further than you've actually captured. I probably crop my sports photos in some way, even if it's just a little kind of straighten and a crop, and we'll get onto straightening in just a minute, but I crop pretty much every sports photo I shoot. Here's a great example of a photo that I took during the game. It's a decent shot, the action's good. I wanted to use the photo, but I've shot it a little bit wider than I needed to. So what you can see I've done is I've cropped it in like this, and it's so much of a better photo just by cropping it in. The original photo was okay, but when I've cropped it in closer, it is a better sports photo. And I find myself giving that advice all the time. People will have half decent sports photos, which could be improved just by cropping them in closer. So have a look at your own sports photos. Could you get away with cropping them a bit tighter? Might that make them look better? Give that a go. Maybe it will improve your images. That brings us nicely on to the next point, and I touched on it just now, and that is to make sure that you straighten your image. Images. This is probably the point that I have to give to people when I critique images more than just about anything else. This is the one that sometimes I see really good photos, good composition, the balls in the shot. It ticks all the boxes, but they haven't straightened the image. And for me, that's just, oh, that's just that final piece. 
straighten it, get it looking nicer. Here's a good example. There's a photo I took. Decent photo. I wanted to include it in the set, but it's wonky. If you look at the door in the background, especially, you can see that photo is slanted. So for me, I had to straighten this photo. Little straighten, slight crop, and it looked like this. Way better than the original photo. All I've really done is cropped it in ever so slightly. I've straightened it, and it's a better image. Take this one away, guys. Please look at your own sports photos, straighten them if they need it, because it will improve them loads and loads. Okay, moving into the next point, and that is about being able to see the front of people and people's faces in your sports photos. Here's a great example of a photo that, you know what, if I took this photo, I would be frustrated because it's a good action shot. It's a key moment. The guy's going to the basket with the ball. But for me, this photo is not seeing the light today it's getting chucked reason why it's the back of the player i can't see his face i can't see the front of his body so for me this photo is no good and this is about you guys being ruthless with yourselves yeah it's a nice photo we want to include it you can see the guy going to the basket but it's no good we can't see his face and because of that the photo is going in the bin with every photo you take if we look at a photo of the same player different type of shot but we can see his face we can see the front of his body it's the same photo we used earlier and we know it's a decent photo the first photo there we can only see his back just don't like it you can't see who it is well you can see who it is you can read the name on the back of the jersey but that's not the point we're looking for faces we're looking for the front of bodies people being open to the camera if not get rid of those photos be ruthless with yourself and that takes me on to my final point for this video and it's just as i've said you have to be ruthless with your images that might be the difference between you having a set of a hundred images from a match and having a set of 30 images from a match but you know what if I can have the choice of having a hundred images and 70 of them are raw okay and maybe even 20 of those are not so great and I've got 30 great images you know what get rid of those 70 let me show the 30 good images because that's what I would rather do you have to be ruthless got a couple of examples right here so here's a moment in the game where actually the action's quite cool the guys split between the two players but there's a few things I didn't like about it number one I can't really see the main player's face that's Stanley Davis Jr he's kind of looking towards the ground I also found the position of it a little bit awkward it didn't quite kind of portray the action that I wanted so because of that I didn't use this photo. If we then look a bit further ahead, I think about two frames later, I got this photo. You know what? Perfect. I can see his face. He's brought the ball up. It's obvious what the action is going to be. Really good photo. But the problem we've got now is there is a defender who has stepped into the frame. And for us to better use that photo, we'd have to crop it with that guy like awkwardly coming in or an arm sticking in from the side of the frame. So for me, again, such a shame. Gutted because the moment's cool. But this photo is not making it into the set. I'm getting rid of this one because the guy coming in from the left has ruined the image for me. Now that means that little sequence of play, we got no images from it. Real shame, but we have to be ruthless. That's what we got to do. To really emphasize the point, I've got a whole series here of images that I shot during the warm up. And of these like 10 images I'm going to show you, two of these made it into the set and let me talk you through why so literally i'm going to flag these um, images up onto the screen and i'm just going to gun through why i didn't use them and you'll see what i mean about being ruthless okay so here we go the first one you can't see the guy's face so straight away for me image is out move into the second one it was the next frame still can't see his face and now in fact the balls disappeared behind the backboard get rid of the image third one this one nearly made it you can kind of see the guy's face but for a generic warm-up shot i couldn't see enough of his face for me so image was gone we then moved to the next one I can maybe see slightly more of his face but too late the ball's gone out the top of the frame behind the backboard and I've chopped his toes off image is gone with this next one I was too late to the party I took this frame too late the key point of the action of the guy dunking the ball was gone I'd missed it this for me was no good got rid of the picture hey here we go here's one we used why I can see his face I can see the ball it's a cool moment I cropped it straightened it slightly this is what the image looked like this one we used literally a second later from the same sequence an image which I didn't use can't see his face anymore the balls disappeared behind the backboard and the rim don't like it image is gone moving on from there again 
again, the ball's still up there above the rim somewhere. Chopped off legs, can't see face, awful image, gone. Okay, next one. This is the other one that we used. Nice image. You can see the face. The body's open towards the camera. I can see the ball. Kept this image. Gave it a little crop. Tiny straight. And this is what it looked like. This is the image that we kept. Again, second later in the same sequence. This image we didn't use. The ball you can't really see. In fact, this one is ever so slightly out of focus. I lost focus where he was flying towards me so quick. Got rid of this image. No good. And the last one I'm going to show you. This one for me was just slightly too late in the moment. The dunks happened. The ball's kind of falling down. Plus, I've chopped off his toes. Wasn't going to use this image. Got rid of it. And that's the last one in the sequence. So you can kind of see what I mean. I was really ruthless with culling those images because you don't want too many photos for the sake of it. You've got to make sure you just keep the good ones. So I hope you guys found that useful. That's pretty much it. Those are my tips. And those are the things that I always say when I find myself critiquing sports images. So if you do want to have someone critique your images, you know what, as a starting point, critique yourself. Look at your own images, apply those points, and if any of those apply, adapt towards them. Adjust your images, and I guarantee your sports photos will improve. I hope you guys found this useful. If you did, make sure you do hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Go check out some of my other social medias. Not too many of you guys will have seen it just yet, but we started the TikTok page. Go find me over there, Rob Sambles and TikTok. You can ask me questions. I'm doing like video answers to questions. So if you've got a question to ask me, that's the best place to do it. Because you'll get a personalized video response out there on TikTok. Hopefully that'll be good for you guys. Go check me out over there. In the meantime, guys, that just about rounds us off. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.